Welcome to Healing Sound Movement Television. My name is John Consumilder. Go to healingsoundmovement.com. Also go to our children's channel worldpeacechild.com. A connection, uh, internet, movie, uh, website for children to be the future change ages for a better and sustainable world. Go to fitanes.nl and of course go to peruqua.com. That's not one of our websites, but that's the website of our special guest of today. And it's a privilege and an honor. Uh, next to me is Peru Frances, also known as Peruqua, with the amazing voice and musical performance. So welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, John. Welcome. Nice to be here. If people want to listen to your work, of course, they can go to peruqua.com to mm -hmm. check the albums. Mm, of course. Before we go into your amazing voice, amazing presence, amazing music, I would like to ask you, what the word sacred means to you? Mm. For me, sacred, I would say, is synonymous with wholeness. Something that takes you into the wholeness of something. Very simple. How important is love in your music? I think I already know the answer. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> what else is there? You know? So that's when I understood that this music is about this love that is flowing through every, every vibration. Mm. And that's what I made a commitment to endeavor to embody as a woman and endeavor to bring through or express through the music. Mm. Talking about expression and femininity, um, sacred marriage maybe also, I read on your website, periquad.com, <laughs> a very interesting thing. The vocal cord has some resemblance with the vagina. Um, I'm not joking here, but it's a very spiritual connection. And I want to ask you about this. How does the voice mm -hmm. literally connect and resonate to our the expression of sexuality? The spiritual functions thereof. Yeah, I mean, it, it goes right back to our you know, when the, the dot beginnings, you know, that first cell and uh, when the, the embryo and the, um, the ovaries, they split from first the ovaries and into the vocal cords. That's the first split. Yeah, so you can amazing. imagine that's the primal split yeah. or the expression of, of life. Mm -hmm. Once she starts to feel that di direct connection uh, with the vagina and she starts to learn to feel herself mm -hmm. directly with the earth, and take the energy through, then she is bringing herself into expression more fully as a human being. Now, what singing does is it amplifies that energy. To resonate it. Exactly, mm -hmm. it resonates. And the body becomes alive and aware of itself. Mm -hmm. And so when the body is in its full resonance, then we are full power. Mm -hmm. And when you recognize that that actual resonance is a flow of love, that the very nature of the earth is that, mm. then the body's flowing as a resonance of love. With this sense of this is me, then they become much more creative, mm. and more whole, more loving, mm. more available to love. Yes. So it's, it's an important journey. For so to create a willingness for openness in the end. Yeah, a, a, and a, a willingness, but mm. love is so, we love love. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing more magnificent than when we fall in love with love. Mm -hmm. So in a way, you could say my, my uh, passion is to arise and evoke and in a way to entice a woman to fall back in love with mm. love. That, that reconnection to the source of love helps a, a person to be able to navigate every moment of, of life from a much more clear place. So when a woman is more fully a woman, then she has so much more to give. Mm. Now for her to become more fully a woman is first, I would say, to re-engage with that, that feminine recognition. Um, but then also to take her into that place 
where he and she are one. Mm -hmm. So she has to meet that inner beloved as well, that inner masculine. Yes. As a planet, we really haven't managed to bring that one into balance yet. Mm. How to actually love with really all of my soul, but not try to own it. Mm. And of course, so in man, there's that fear that if I give myself fully to a woman, she's going to then own me. She's going to steal all my energy away. She's going to control me. She's going to cut my hair like that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, so there's not so many fearless lovers on mm. the earth mm. because of this fundamental doorway has been so battered and broken. A relationship is, is here to actually bring each other back to the source mm -hmm. of our to love. To be mirrors. To be mirrors but to dive in, mm -hmm. to make a commitment. The commitment is to dive in through all the shit and all the pain mm -hmm. and keep diving back to the source of love no matter how thick and smelly and awful and syrgy and mm. that that uh, conditioning is to make that commitment to keep diving back down into the source of it mm. how does because of course we as healing sound movement are very interested in what you do from the healing part of it of course love is the most healing power for us there is but you talked about uh, sound being mm -hmm. so primal so mm -hmm. uh, fundamental mm -hmm. of course we have the logos with the principle that first we have sound mm -hmm. then we have light then we have manifestation and mm -hmm. god said let there be light first sound then light um, how important in your work and maybe you can describe this process is sound as a healing modality because it can break open through resonance and entrainment all kind of obstacles <laughs> yeah uh, what is your experience in your workshops in your music in your own uh, performances, so to speak, how powerful sound can be as a healing modality. Sound is so direct. You know, we can sit here and have a discussion about how we feel, or and and we could get through a certain layer mm. of. We can talk about it. Yeah, we could talk about it, but if we sat here and sounded how we would feel, mm -hmm. we would go from the mind down into the body, and it would be direct. Yes. And that's where, the, where, where sound is just, it really strips time. Mm -hmm. It opens up the doorway back to the pristine state. And so I found, for example, in my work that to get these centers open, mm. sound is, is the most direct way. And I both work with intuitive sound and I also work with uh, some ancient chants. Mm -hmm. um, Intuitive sound for a woman, I find, and man actually, is very, very direct. Mm -hmm. So we often think about singing as um, coming from the chords. But from the principle that I work from, I would say that, that the vagina sings. Mm. You know? That's hard for men to do though. That's hard for a man to do, absolutely. <laughs> For man, it's a little bit different. Yes. I work differently with mm, men. Sure. But, but for women to actually get the, the vagina or the yoni, that doorway open mm. and sounding, it, it's a very, very direct way for her to start to actually open up and release a lot of the emotional trauma that the is blockages. stuck in the body. So then there's a sense of, wow, this is my home. Mm. I'm home inside myself. Mm. And that's a very beautiful thing mm. to see open up mm. inside of a woman. Now you use music in your workshop also as therapeutics. Um, have you also used music in a more consciousness raising kind of awareness, another kind of healing of course, but are there any specific goals? I would always uh, almost say you try to reach with different kind of CDs or different kind mm -hmm. of performances, different kind of workshops, and if so, can you mention them, mm -hmm. explain them? Well, th what I've just spoken about um, Really, I've worked with a, a CD that I've just created called Emotional Cleansing. Mm -hmm. And that's where basically I've evoked the state through music yes. of the feeling of the womb and that, that grief that is stuck globally. In, in a way, that's womb. also an altered state of consciousness to get back to your original state. Yes. For, yeah. yeah. So in a way, with sound and the music that I use in the workshops, or women can take the CD home mm -hmm. with them, of course, and practice on their own, is... Uh, I've, I've gone to the, mm, the vibration of the distortion, but I've also gone to the vibration where there's wholeness. 
Mm -hmm. So it triggers both levels in, in the woman's body when she listens to this to evoke her into her own expression mm -hmm. of whatever that, that pain and grief is. And it's also an opportunity, I might say, or might ask, for cosmoplanetary factors to come in because it's a cyclical, energetic Absolutely. input. Absolutely, because when, th when the womb, because if we take the micro-macro principle, when the womb is opening, you've opened to the cosmos. Mm -hmm. You've opened to that alignment with with the whole cosmos. Mm. So a woman is in her cosmic nature when she's bleeding. And you can see how far away as, mm. a, as a world culture we've come from a woman being, I'm bleeding, I'm in the cosmos. To know I'm, I'm bleeding, oh, it's so annoying, it's you know? It's upside world, the world turned upside down. It's completely mm. uh, inside out mm -hmm. or outside yes instead of inside, yes. literally. So when I composed this uh, song, then I had to go into this, uh, into this space. Mm -hmm. and, um, but to express it through word, because the bleeding state is not a mental state. By the way, I hope you have your own studio, because otherwise I can imagine you calling the producer and saying, I'm bleeding right now, do you actually have some free time for your studio? <laughs> Yes, I'll bring some towels, it's fine. Just arrange the space, I'll do the sacred space. I can, I can imagine your own studio would be very convenient in those inconvenient days. Absolutely, yes. yes. My, my little laptop and my home studio yes. is great. Yes. <laughs> but it's funny that you mention that because after I had composed this song, I did ring my producer and I said, <laughs> <laughs> I said to him, Hey, Pedro, I really want some studio time, but you should know the song's about bleeding, you know, and he had just produced my emotional cleansing CD you know and he'd been through hell with this because when he was mixing whatever the emotion was as a sensitive producer he was going through the whole uh, energy for example of anger you know yeah. and uh, he was really like trying to mix but it was like imagine like say two or three days on this really powerful sound of anger and he's like <laughs> you know? I'm sorry, Lex. It's okay. Go on. <laughs> oh, grief. He was just like, no. Oh, we're going to do the grief track today. God, this makes me feel so bad, so sad. And I can imagine you recording your first takes on your laptop yeah. while bleeding. Also very convenient. Yeah, yeah. and, uh, and uh, so I, uh, this particular day I was going to the studio to meet him. I just found this fantastic uh, project. Someone had posted on uh, Facebook and somebody, uh, it's the cervix project, and somebody had actually just um, photographed over a period of time many mm -hmm. different women and the 28-day cycle mm. of how, uh, taken photographs inside the cervix and how it looks over this. Like they do with the moon, but yes. now the inner moon. Now the inner moon mm. opening. And I had posted it on my page and uh, my producer, I rang him, he said, Oh my God, bro, I was eating breakfast and I got your cervix post, you know. I really felt sick. <laughs> I can't choose which album cover to choose from the 28 you just gave me. Sorry. <laughs> we need a bottle of red wine in two hours. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I feel that if, if we start to listen to that inner calling, that's, I think, for any human being, that's the first place to begin. And it does, you mentioned courage earlier, it takes a lot of courage to actually listen to that inner calling where that spark of something inside says yes. That's always the sign of it, that there's, there's an opening that yeah. happens in the body, in the heart often, in the body, and there's that sense of thrill. And that's the calling. Yeah. Um, your expression of your calling is very, very much your own expression. Um, but to find the doorway and to trust that doorway to follow that spark, that yes, that, that calling from within is, is the most important thing you can bring to the world. Mm -hmm. It makes a very rich human being, mm -hmm. uh, a very alive human being, uh, because the calling is the source calling you. And if you follow the mm. calling, the calling will take you all the way back to the source, mm. where you realize that you've always been calling yourself and the self has been calling you. Mm. Then, then we have union, then we have the marriage, then we have 
love opening up through this body because then if I'm following my calling, I'm myself. And, and that, as I get older, I realize that I'm never actually doing anything. I'm just being myself following my calling. That sounds like a good job, by the way. It's a great job. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's a very, very beautiful job. Mm. If you can imagine as a human being what it is that you love and so naturally comes to you and you really follow that and give yourself to that, then you're being yourself doing your work. Sounds good to me. It sounds very important, so it sounds good to me. I want to thank you for your time. <laughs> and, and also, <laughs> 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 well, it was a good bye communication. Thank you for your time. And for our listeners, go to healingsoundmovement.com, worldpeacechild.com. But first, and mainly, go to peruqua.com for all her amazing music, therapeutics, and love she spreads throughout the world. Thank you for your time.